Hi everyone, I thought I would end our half term on a bit of a high and think about doing a different activity all around making us feel empowered and feeling a little bit happy and leaving this half term on a positive note. And seeing as we did our dress to impress activity last Friday, which I know so many of you enjoyed, and I even had compliments on my yellow outfit, which I showed you, which thank you very much. I was very pleased for the compliments. Um, I thought, well, we'll finish our half term on another activity, but this week focusing on another area of how we feel and leaving us feeling very positive and ready for a nice week off. So I have popped some pictures up on the screen. Just spend a couple of minutes having a little look at them. OK, this is a little clue. All these pictures are a clue as to what our learning is about today, what our focus of our lesson is. So just have a couple of minutes having a look at them. What are the people doing in them? Who are the people in them? What have they achieved? OK, so today then we are going to be focusing on bravery. OK, and being brave. And now I want to, you to look at these pictures in a different light and think, now the focus is on bravery, why are all these people in these pictures being brave? What does that mean to you? Have a little think, what does it mean if people are being brave? What are they doing in these pictures? Okay, so you might have said something like, here I've got a picture of a little girl. And she is being brave because she's holding a snake. OK, she's holding an animal that she's not familiar with before. I don't know if you've held a snake or even touched an animal or a pet that you've been a bit worried about, a bit scared, and you've been brave and you have stroked them. OK, here we've got another brave girl and she is learning to swim and she's diving off a diving board for the first time. So she is being brave. Here I've got some young boys and they are running a very long race. So they're being brave, they're facing their challenges. I've got somebody learning to ride a bike. He's being brave, climbing a really high wall. Maybe you've climbed a really high tree. Maybe you've climbed over an obstacle, okay? And you've been brave and faced that challenge. You might even have had to go to the doctors before or even the dentist and you are, very brave, you're superheroes because you've had to go and see people who or places where you don't really like going. Okay, even to come into school sometimes. I know sometimes there are days when I think, oh, I just don't want to get up out of bed. I just don't want to go to school. It's so dark. And you are brave because you are overcoming all those fears and making it in. Okay. So thinking about that then, what is bravery? Hmm. So have a little think in your head now, a bit of thinking time. What is bravery? What does it mean to be brave? And I'm going to type some ideas down, but have a little think first. Mm, bravery. Bravery. Okay. If you need a bit more thinking time, just pause the video now. But I'm going to write some ideas down to say what I think bravery means. So I think you're brave if you try something new. OK, so if you're trying something new that you've never done before, I think you're being quite brave. I think you're brave if you are doing something that scares you. OK, so doing something that scares you. If something is scaring you, you have to really, really fight that fear, don't you, to be able to do it. Hmm, what else does bravery mean to me? Um... I know, working hard even when I am tired. Yeah, okay, sometimes I'm really, really tired and I have to work really, really hard. I know I'm being brave and I'm overcoming that fear. What about putting others before yourself? So putting others first. Because sometimes we have to put other people first, don't we, over us, and that is showing that we are brave as well. So I've got a little story that I want to read you and it's got some brave characters in. 
So I'm going to stop sharing this and share with you my story. And we're thinking about who is brave in this story and what have they done that has made them brave. So I'm going to stop sharing that. Hopefully you can see my story here. So I've chosen to read the story, Frog is a Hero. And we're going to have a little think today and think about who are the characters in here that are being brave and what can we take from this story? Dark clouds were gathering in the sky. The sun disappeared behind the clouds. We all know what that means at the moment with the weather. <gasps> oh, it's starting to rain, thought Frog happily. The first drops were already falling on his bare skin. <gasps> Frog loved the rain. He danced for joy as the raindrops fell thick and fast. It's raining, it's raining, my shorts are soaking wet, he sang loudly. You see how happy he is? It's very opposite to how I feel about the rain, I don't know about you. The sky got darker and darker. Oh, it looks so miserable. Now it was raining cats and dogs. This was a bit too much, even for Frog. And he ran home dripping wet. Oh, have you ever done that before? I hate it when I get soaking wet when I go outside. Frog made himself a nice hot cup of tea. The raindrops pattered against the window, but he was nice and cosy inside. After three days of rain, however, Frog began to feel restless. <sighs> that means he's getting a bit fed up and he wants something to do. He wondered how Duck and Pig and Hare were. He hadn't seen them since the rain started. Hmm. I wonder where he is. I wonder where Duck and Pig and Hare are then, if they're not together. Should we have a look? On the fifth day, the river began to rise. It wasn't long before water came streaming into Frog's house. Oh my goodness, can you see here on the bottom of this picture? This is where all the water has come in. At first, Frog thought it was funny, but then he began to worry. He hurried over to Duck's house. It was flooded there as well. Oh, where's all this water coming from? Asked Duck desperately. The river has burst its banks, shouted Frog. Let's go to Pig's house. Hopefully Pig's house is dry. Let's check. Uh-oh. Together, they waded through the watery landscape. That means they're walking through the water. Ooh. Pig was leaning out of his attic window. Why do you think he's leaning out of his attic window rather than his living room window? Oh, I think I know why. All my things are wet, he cried. Uh -oh. It was true. Tables and chairs were all floating around the room. Look, everything was in a mess. They couldn't stay there. Let's go and see hair, suggested Frog. Can you see, look? Pig's looking very unhappy. He's got a teardrop coming down his eyes. Hare's house was on an island in the middle of the water. <sighs> Thank goodness. Hare stood at the door and waved to them. Come inside, he shouted. It's dry here. And you see, because he's on an island, the water hasn't reached him yet. He's been very lucky. Oh, it was warm inside and gratefully they dried themselves in front of the stove and told Hare how their houses had been flooded. You see him dishing up his food for everybody. You must all stay here, said Hare. There's plenty of room and I've got plenty of food. So they all sat down to a big pot of stew Hare had made. They were very hungry and they ate everything up. Then. They settled down to a cosy evening with the rain still pattering against the window panes. They stayed at Hare's as Hare's guest for days. They were happy together whilst outside it rained and rained. But then one day they found out that they were down to their last loaf of bread. We have no more food left declared Hare gravely. Oh no, what are we going to do? said Duck. The next day, only the last crumbs of bread were left. They were terribly hungry, but nobody knew what to do. Outside, it stopped raining, but the water was still very high. I know, shouted Frog suddenly. I'll swim across to the hills and fetch help. 
Hair looked concerned. Oh, the current is very strong. It's such a long way, he said. It's too dangerous. I can manage it, cried Frog enthusiastically. I'm the best swimmer of us all. And they all knew that this was true. Do you think I'll make it across? Fingers crossed. So Frog stepped bravely into the water. His friends watched nervously. <sighs> Soon he disappeared into the distance. The water was ice cold. But Frog didn't think about it. He thought of duck and hare and pig who were all hungry. The further Frog swam, the stronger the current became. Frog felt tired. Oh, he was hardly making any headway. That means it was hardly moving. Suddenly, the current pulled him away. Frog started to sink. Oh no, I'm just a frog that can't swim anymore, he thought. I'll drown. I'll never see my friends ever again. Just then, a familiar voice said, Hello, what have we got here? And two strong arms ugh, pulled Frog out of the water and into a boat. It was Rat. Frog told Rat all about the rain and the flood and the hunger and how he had tried to set out to get help. Don't worry, said Rat. My boat is full of provisions for my travels. There's plenty of food here for everyone. And he set sail for Hare's boat house, sorry, where the three friends were waiting for help to arrive. Oh, poor Froggy looks exhausted, doesn't he? Pig, duck and hare cheered when they saw Frog return in a boat. But who was with him? Of course, it was their good friend Rat. They could hardly believe their eyes. And Rat had so much food on board, bread, honey, jam, Peanut butter, oh, that's my favourite. Vegetables, potatoes, and so much more. Oh, Rat, you've saved us, said her. No, said Rat, you've got Frog to thank for that. It was Frog who, who swam through the treacherous flood, risking his life to reach me. They all looked at Frog. He was glowing with pride. It wasn't exactly true, but still. From then on, Things got better. The friends celebrated their rescue and Frog was their hero. The sun was shining again and the water was beginning to go down. After a couple of days, the water had gone. Frog, duck and pig were all able to return to their homes. But everything was dirty and muddy. No problem, said Rat, and with his help, they fixed things up just as they had been before. But things weren't quite the same as before because none of them would ever forget the terrible flood. Oh, what a fabulous story. I've really enjoyed that. And it's definitely made me start thinking about what it means to be a hero and what it means to be somebody who is also brave. So let's go back then and use this story now to think about what bravery is and who was brave in that story. So I've got a couple of questions that I want you to think about. And my first one is why was Frog brave? So in that story, remember, Frog had did some actions. He went somewhere to try and get food. So what did he do that made him brave? Hmm. I know. So what he did, so he went out swimming in dangerous waters. What else did he do that was brave? He risked his life, didn't he? He risked his life. He went on his own. Um, we could also say that he tried to help his friends so that they didn't starve, so that they got food. I'm 
also going to say that he l looked out for others, looked out for his friends. Okay. But I think, although Frog was brave in that story, were there any other characters that were brave as well? And why were they brave? Have a little think. Who else in that story do you think was brave? So there was Duck. And there was Rat. What about Rack? What could we say about Rack that made him brave? Ah, Rack went out in the boat, didn't he? And he rescued Frog. And then he gave them the food. So I think Rat was brave. So Rat, because he rescued Frog, and he also gave them food, but he went out in the rain, didn't he? But rescued Frog went out in the storm. Ooh. And gave the animals food. So he was being brave because he could have just stayed indoors, couldn't he? We also had, which other animals were brave? We could also say that, I think we could say that duck and pig were brave because they also went out, didn't they? And they went through, through the water to go and stay with hare. So I'm gonna say duck and, duck and pig, they went through the water to get to Hare's house. So, I don't know about you, but I definitely think that story has got me thinking about the different things that characters do in stories, but what we also do as friends and as teachers and as mums and dads to, that are brave in our everyday life. And I think now more than ever, we're all being very brave because we're all doing things that are a bit strange, and are not our normal routine. So using this then, I want to think, and I want you to think at home as well, about when have you been brave? Okay, so when have you been brave? And there are lots and lots and lots of times when you've been brave, so don't think that there aren't. There are lots of times when you've been brave. And we're going to start this by doing a self-portrait in the middle. So we're just gonna do our faces. I want you to have a go at drawing your faces, not your mums and dads. You can have a go at drawing your faces, okay? So let's have a go. So I'm gonna draw myself first. So here's my lovely face. Da -da -da. I'm gonna color it in. There I am. I'm gonna give myself a big smile, hopefully. Big smile, a nice nose. In fact, you know what? I think I'm gonna do myself a big, big cheesy smile with red lips. Look at this. You ready? There's my big smile. Yeah, that's a better smile, isn't it, for a Friday? Then I'm gonna do a big nose. Then I'm gonna do, I've got blue eyes. I'm gonna draw my blue eyes. There they are. Draw my eyebrows. Da, da, da. My eyebrows look a little bit wiggly. Hopefully you'll be able to get yours in a better, better situation than I can. Right, I'm going to draw my ears. Here they are. Da, da, da. Also going to give myself a neck, I think. Um, I'm colour my ears in. Going to make my neck a little bit Thicker. There we go, and I'll colour in. What have I missed off? My hair. You're right. Even my hair, don't I? Otherwise, I'm not going to look like me. Here we go. I know I don't have my hair down much, but I'm just going to do it like this, just for ease to show you. Here's my bright yellow hair. Looks a bit luminous on this, but I'll go with it. I'll go down with my luminous yellow lockdown hair. Here it is. Ta da! Okay, so now I've had a go at doing my self-portrait and I really do want you to have a go at drawing yourselves at home, not your mums and dads like I've seen some of you doing. Okay, you can have a go at drawing yourselves. So once you've had a little go at drawing yourself, I want you to think 
of times when you have been brave. And I want you to fill your page with lots and lots of ideas. Now, you can either draw all the different times that you've been brave, or you could even get photos out of different times that you've been brave, or you can write when you've been brave. Okay, so there's three different ways there. You can draw how you've been brave, or you can write how you've been brave, or you can find me photos on here as well. So I'm gonna spend a few minutes now thinking about times when I know I've been brave. So let me think. Hmm, I've been brave. I know, picking up a spider. I'm gonna draw the spider. Yeah, okay, so picking up a spider. Here's my spider, look. Ooh. I really don't like spiders, they scare me, okay. I know that picking up a spider means that I've been very brave. So that's my first one there. So picking up a spider, that's one thing I've done that's been brave. Another thing, um, you know what? I'm going to say going for a walk every day. I think that for me at the moment is something that I'm doing that is brave because it's really hard to motivate myself to get out of the house when it's cold, when it's miserable, when it's snowing, when it's raining. So for me, I'm overcoming that fear, ugh, that feeling that I don't want to do something I'm brave and I'm going for a walk every day. What else have I done that's been brave? I know I have been doing lots of learning at home. So I've been reading lots of books, lots of books and working every day okay you might want to put down that because you've been doing your home learning every day that's something that you've done that has been brave okay you found it challenging doing lots of your work from home but you're being brave and you're doing it every day i know another thing that i did that was brave i went sledging down a really tall hill oh it's quite scary let me shall i try and draw that one Wonder if I can draw it right. I'm going to put that there. I'm going to draw my snowy hill. Are you ready? Here's my snowy hill. Da, da, da. I'm going to draw myself sledging down it. I'm going to get my have a red sledge. And my red sledge, look, here it is. And I slid down on my lovely red sledge. Here I am. Oh, I wore my group. I haven't got the same colour of my coat, but we'll, we'll do rough coats. I'm going to choose a pink coat. Here I am, sliding down the sledge, sliding down the hill. Big wellies on. Where's my yellow hair? Whee! Looks a bit like a mountain there, actually, doesn't it? But still, we get the gist. Okay, so there I am, sledging down my hill. I thought that was quite quite brave for me in this weather. Um, what else have I done that's been brave for me? Um, oh, what about making, cooking a new recipe? Yeah, cooking a new recipe. That's something else I've tried. That wasn't easy. I found it quite challenging, but I was brave. Um, you know what? I don't know about you, but because I've spent a lot of time at home with my family, sometimes when I'm really tired, I get a bit snappy and I get a bit angry and a bit cross. And sometimes I say things that I don't mean to say, but they're a bit unkind. And a brave thing to do is to say sorry. So sometimes I've said sorry when I've said things that I shouldn't have maybe. And I think that's a brave thing to do. Okay, acknowledging that what you've said might be wrong or that you need to take consequences of your actions. So this is my little self-portrait that I want you to have a little go at doing today. And maybe you're wanting to just do all the pictures of things that you've been brave. Maybe you're wanting to write down all the things that you've done a brave, but have a little go. Because I know for a fact that you've all been very brave this half term. You've all been working extremely hard. So I want you to show me some of the achievements that you've had over the past few weeks. And maybe even speak to mums and dads and brothers and sisters, because I bet as well that they will tell you lots of things that you've done are brave. 
take a photo of this or even take a video of it tell me what you've done and please send it to me and miss air so we can see because i just know it's going to put a big smile on our faces if i don't see you this afternoon for onyx and for our story time have a lovely half term and we can't wait to hopefully see you soon after we come back after the holidays but take care have a lovely break bye